this thing for me, you know, it's like got my first record deal at Sony Epic and then that went away, you know, like that was like the point where I was just like, oh my gosh, like when I was like 22, we were signed to them for, I believe three, three to four years. Um, and then like lost the record deal, got dropped, you know, that's like the story where it's just like, yeah. oh, cool. Like, how did that happen? What, what does that feel like? And I think for me, that was the big kick in the face where mm -hmm. it was just like, you know, I had, I had the record deal, you know, you get the advance, you go out, you buy some cool stuff. You're 18 years old, you know, I'm like playing TRL in like the TRL window, like with the band closing out the MTV show and you're high on life and you go out to make records and do all the things that you're supposed to do when you're signed to a label. But I never really knew much about like the music, like the business itself. Mm. It was mainly just like, cool, I'm gonna drum, drum, figure this out, got the deal. And then like, didn't really understand, like, why are we working with all these different songwriters? Like, what is me, what is music publishing? Like, yeah. why are they asking us for our publishing names? And like, what is, what is the actual record deal that we just signed? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. what actually, what did we just sign? Yeah. <laughs> um, and like, you know, kind of lost it all. And like, that made me kind of think back and start to reflect on like, becoming more of a like mindful businessman in the sense of just understanding the nature of like where I'm playing in mm. and how to best optimize that by knowing the ins and outs of like record deals and record labels and what they do and music publishing and what songwriters do and what how how music recording studios like operate and all yeah. of that and so when I was 22 and, and or 23 when that all happened I ended up starting my own recording studio so I leased a small little space at the time it was called Stars Enterprises which was a um, 1200 square foot building in the media district in Hollywood um, and started to write songs for other people. You know, it was just like, cool. I, I understand a bit about this publishing game. I'm going to get in the studio and just try and figure out with these two other friends of mine, let's just make records. Um, uh, and so we did that out of this little space that we rented. Awesome. It was like just this like tear down, yeah. like POS, <laughs> like, crazy place yeah. that was like we walked in for the first time and like all the walls were painted like you know purple and green and yellow <laughs> and all this stuff and we we're like okay this is not a studio but we're gonna make it happen and that studio kind of became my like almost like just own personal like ownership of my own thing yeah. that was like separate from the band world but still in music but it was like cool i've got this studio now that i'm leasing um i got these two guys were making songs for other people you know we ended up getting some cool cuts like we worked with zendaya on one of her first albums wow. um i flew to london worked with a music producer named nelly hooper who did all like the bjork and no doubt yeah, stuff yeah. um lived at his space for four months in london and got into this kind of like production making music world yeah. um and then got this great studio to kind of work out of him um yeah from there um kind of just uh got out of like playing drums a lot, you know, like I was filling in every once in a while for friends projects, like hip hop things. And this girl, Lolene that I played with on Capitol records and just popped, popped around to yeah. a bunch of different stuff. And, um, yeah, it, like still to this day, we operate that studio. It's been like one of my, uh, you've been the, no, the noise studio. nest. Yeah. yeah. Incredible so, what you've done with thanks, from what man. you just told me what it was to what it is now. Yeah. It's just like, yeah. Wow. That was another, like just seeing the growth of how it's all expanded, yeah. you know, to now it's, yeah, this like 10,000 square foot facility now yeah. from from what it was with like five studios and we built like two basketball courts. And yeah, it's this amazing like content facility for all things. Amazing. But um, yeah, it didn't start that way. So it's right. cool to see something like start like from like a seed of an idea. Yeah. That you don't really know where it's going to go, but you're passionate enough about it to start it and to figure out how that all grows and expands um, is definitely the no like the noisiness was that for yeah. me and to have that building in space is so cool to have that place to jump into and be creative. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I met John Feldman along the way in that process. So when yeah. I was about 28 years old, um, I was definitely one of the kids that had watched like the maybe a memories DVD and like Dude, be yeah. used and like, cool. oh, you know what I'm saying? Yes. It was like the thing with the, you know, it was like the yeah. coolest thing ever. It's John Feldman. Yeah. Watching that. I was like, okay, wait, who's this guy in the studio with this like amazing guy who's throwing up all over the place and like screaming and <laughs> yeah, just yeah. like wild kids from Utah. Like, Dude. what a cool story. Yeah. Um, and uh, I was one of those kids. I was like, dude, I gotta meet John Feldman. Yeah, yeah. I gotta meet this guy. Like, how am I gonna meet this guy? Yeah. You know, like hit him up, called him, somehow got an introduction and I was playing in like a, a band called Half the Animal, which was a group that I had started and uh, right around like 27, 28 years old. And, uh, and John like listened to one song and over the phone he was just like, just so abrupt and just like honest, you know, which yeah. I love so much about yep, him. Yep. He was like, 
nope, not this isn't for me. <laughs> yeah. You know, but like cool song, but I wouldn't know what to do with this. You know, and I hear and there's so many things today that like I watch him do that today over and over and over to yeah. so many bands that want to work with him. And I remember how that felt because for like sure. I was the guy on the receiving end of that yeah. initially. I was like, okay, but like, you know, I'd go home to my wife and be like, I'm gonna, I gotta figure out a way to work with John. Like yeah. John's just the legend, like how am I gonna do this? And then ended up meeting him on set for a, a, a like a movie he was kind of producing. It was a Broadway musical around the story of his life growing up as a punk rock kid in San Francisco that he's created. It's yeah. beautiful, it's amazing, it's really cool. It's called Castle Hill. We're still in the process of figuring out how to Incredible. get this thing like working, but I met him on the set of this thing. Um, he introduced me to a, a guy named John Cohen who was running a label called Vagrant Records yeah. at the time. And he was looking to get out of his situation. I think they had just sold to BMG and um, he was looking to kind of figure out another thing. And then John just started talking about like how he's never had a record label, you know? And I'm like, oh, this is interesting. Like, what do you mean you've never had your own record label? He's like, oh, I've just made songs for other people's albums and like other people's projects my whole life, yeah. you know? Um, and just been a producer. I've never had my own thing. And I was like, well, shoot, like, would you want to maybe think about starting like a label? Like, what, what would that mean? And so John Cohen, who was at this movie set while they were filming this whole thing, like with the three of us sat together and he was like, I want to introduce you to John. You know, John was looking to kind of get out of his yeah. situation and then it just happened. It, that was like kind of like my in in, a, in a, a bit with like John to start this concept of a label. Crazy. Um, and, uh, and that was my introduction to him. And, you know, the Goldfinger thing, I think naturally just kind of came out of that, right. of like having a label with John um, and like, so stoked to be able to play shows with those guys right now and like the experiences that have come from that have been amazing touring all over australia you know yeah. headlining vans warp tour the last year that it happened um just so many just great memories Dude. that like i wouldn't have gotten from like my own projects that like right. having that platform with john has definitely like elevated my experience as a drummer through that and i think has elevated other things with girlfriends and all the other projects yeah. that i'm doing yeah. because of that and so yeah, um, that was dude, my introduction to John, you know? So much to unpack yeah. right there, yeah. dude.